What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. With yours, Comp and... Dad Vember. As well as... Happy as a clam. Today's film is... <laughs> Midsommar 2019. Midsommar 2019. A couple travels to Sweden to visit a rural hometown's favorite Ooh. Midsummer festival. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. Directed by Ari Aster. Written by Ari Aster. Starring Florence Pugh, Jack Rayner, mm-hmm. Wilhelm Balmgren. <laughs> As well as William Jackson Harper, Will Powder, Elora Torquia, His last name is Powder? Well Archie Medekwe, and a whole bunch of other people. So, why did I pick Midsommar? I don't know. Because it's uh, uh, the worst movie I've seen this year. Uh, it uh, is uh. what I'd say if I was an asshole, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Midsommar. Uh, uh, let's talk about Midsommar. So... Thea, you're the lady. You you just seen Midsummer. When did you see it? About a week, two weeks ago, or something? But about a week and a half ago. And you saw the director's cut. Danny, when did you see Midsummer? With you about a month ago. Oh yes. And also, so, so I've I seen see- the the directors in the theater, and then I saw the theatrical yesterday. Fascinating. I know. Uh, so I saw Midsummer the week that it came out. I saw the original cut, and then I also saw the director's cut with Danny. Look at this hipster. I- he knew Midsummer before everyone else. I fucked Danny up by coming late to the theater and ma- making him miss the first, like, three minutes of the movie. <gasps> that was upset. very critical. But they are kind of critical. <laughs> you've seen it since. Uh, we literally walked in, and, and I'm like, <laughs> I went to the theater all late, and Danny was like, oh, oh, God, oh, I'm having an, a <laughs> panic attack. Help me. Shut up. So go up into the- <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. I know that was probably supposed to be private. Anyway. You jerk. What a dick. <laughs> So we go to the theater, and then, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, Danny, it's okay. We're going to And I'm like, pointing at the screen. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. I'm like, I, I fucked up Danny's whole day. But then he enjoyed the movie. I did so enjoy I the movie. Well, that's good. So, strangely, watching time. people have bad trips and be terrified makes my own panic go away. This is the first time I've seen a movie twice in the same year within a span of a two months or three months or so. So, it's. That shows what kind of film it is. Usually I'll see a movie once and that's it for a long, long time. Unless mm-hmm. it's um, The Fifth Element, which I've probably seen 900 fucking times. Yeah. Um, because that's on TV pretty much every other week. Yeah. But with this film, this being the follow-up to what film, Thea? Follow-up to Ari Aster's first movie, Hereditary. No connection, but yes. very similar but in very style. But th- very similar in themes and style Mm -hmm. it's interesting because Ari Aster has probably with with his second feature alone uh, well I guess I mean a lot of directors do cement their own styles in their first or two you know the first two films yeah Um, but he's one of the more the more latest directors he's talking about not doing horror anymore because he doesn't want to be the horror guy I think he he says that he wants to get he wants to get back to it but next he wants to do some kind of wacky comedy sort of like Sam Raimi did that Sam Raimi Mm -hmm. went into Sam Raimi never made horror he only made wacky comedy after, that's true. That's <laughs> In true. a way, yes. <laughs> but after after he did Evil Dead 2, I think he went into some film called Crime Spree, which was like a nod to 1940 sort of slapstick okay. at gangster comedy, and people absolutely hated it. Uh, but either way, he went and he's done a whole bunch of different types of films, which I do not... Um, do not fault Mr. Astor for because he is an absolutely incredible filmmaker. And you know how people... I just hope he sticks to horror because... He could do all this stuff, but get back to horror eventually because he's really good at it. I do see, like... Because I've seen a lot of Ari Aster's short films online. His... He's like, he had a short film that you don't really hear about short films that much on the internet. You see them here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mentions and stuff. But he had a pretty, like... A, a, a sleeper hit with this film called um, something about the something about Mary. Jones? No, no. What is it? There's something. Oh, fuck There's something about answer. Mary. Oh, he did that. That's so cool. That's I'll find so it. You keep dude. talking. Yeah, he did a film. <laughs> a film called something about the Johnsons or something about that, and uh, it w- it got very viral. The strange thing about the Johnsons. Scar. There you go. Strange thing about the Johnsons. Because ah. the other only viral short film that I remember hearing anything about was Lights Out. You know, the one with the lady turning yeah. on the lights and off. That, and that got made into movie. a feature. That made into a feature film that like went. It just disappeared. Right. Yeah. Um, with an interesting concept, but that just that movie just kind of vanished, and I wasn't interested in seeing that. But anyway, 
Ari Aster had made this film, The Strange Thing About the Johnsons, which is, I, I won't spoil what it's about, but it's very fucked up. It might be even more fucked it's up about, than uh, it's about a or, demon clown that... It's not. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, that lives in the sewers and get my focus and it's about... That's good stuff. <laughs> That's why we keep... <laughs> this is why I'm here, to make, to interrupt important things and talk about... But that reminds me of, speaking of important things, uh... Please visit horrorharbor.tumblr.com. That's where uh, Thea is coming oh from Lord. today. Anyway, oh. <laughs> uh, she she uh, she is here, and she we've wrestled her away from her fiance. So she's here against, away. against her will. Anyway, so back to the strange thing about the Johnsons. Uh, it's a very very dark short film, and I went in. I saw every other short that Ari Aster made, and they're uniquely different type of films. And they're all uniquely very well made, really good films. Are they funny? And they, they, he does two, um, one or two comedies. There's ones that's like a long standing sort of monologue with this woman, and it's mm-hmm. really good because it switches visuals and stuff. But then there's other one where it was like this, a uh, private detective, and he's played by an actor that we've all seen in movies. He's like this fat guy with a, he looks like a Wilfred Brimley uh-huh. type of guy. <laughs> but we have seen this actor before, but I cannot think of where he's from. But he's basically in everything, and what happens is he's a private detective trying to figure something out, and his dick keeps shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's very funny. But Ari Aster, with this film Hereditary, it has basically you know double double stacked the fact that he knows how to make a film because mm-hmm. this is like when when you see a unique director, let's say um, Royal Tenenbaums director, you know everybody will basically that is what is his name. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> Under, Underwater Life of Steve. <laughs> yeah, I can't Sue. think of it. Um, he's basically the, the director Wes Anderson. that. Yeah, yeah Wes that Anderson <laughs> is Wes Anderson is a director that people say Ari Aster is like the horror version of him. So, right. You know what I mean? Because he very has very visual. yeah, hyper very visual. visual. But our, um, Wes Anderson is hyper visual. Like his his stuff is very. Well, Wes Anderson's very like symmetrical and like. He sort of paints like a 2D world almost, but in 3D. Yeah, I used to follow, right, right. I believe it was on Reddit, there was a whole thing about like pictures that look like a Wes Anderson movie, and people would just post like symmetrical, you know, weirdly colored houses and shit like that on there all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, I would almost say that like Wes Anderson films are cartoony, but I don't want to say that because it might, people might take it the wrong way. But they're very much stylized in a. But they in are. They're like Mark Ryder. Like, they look like uh, like indie gr- indie indie comic sort of graphic novel look to them. Because and he, Ast- he thinks so much about the composure of like right. what it's going to look like as a flat sort of set piece that yeah. that's what every shot feels like. Whereas I feel like Ari Aster is more like I'm going to set up a scene where things are constantly moving and then I'm just going right. to take the camera through the center of it. Essentially. Yeah. So while they're very similar, that the fact that they sort of. They, they sort of immerse themselves in, I guess, Caucasian worlds. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not... I don't think about these films in that way. But that's yeah. basically... That's basically it the is. sort of thing people say. that Oh, these are very white films. Which so fine get whiter than Sweden. Fuck. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so um, Wes Anderson's films have that very painterly, um, very retro look. But Ari Aster's, the difference is that his is also re- retro, but in a 70s type of way. That they mm-hmm. look very well composed, but there's constant movement and there's constant story flow. So, Thea, how does Midsommar begin? So, Midsommar d- begins with um, Danny, our heroine, hey. who is... <laughs> other hey. Danny. Hey! hey. Um, and she is um, on the phone. She's trying to get a hold of her parents, who are not picking up their in bed asleep, it seems. And then she gets a hold of her... Um, boyfriend and he's basically trying to calm her down because she's got this email from her sister who is bipolar and she basically has said, said some very concerning things so by email and so there, Danny's freaking the f- out. That's the first link between this and hereditary because hereditary is also an allegory for schizophrenia and mental mm-hmm. illness. So there's and grief. this here which yes obviously and this deals also with um uh, mental illness for the fact that her sister ha- is bipolar, but also she, her, Danny herself, has issues with um, anxiety. What, like just anxiety, right? Yeah. And so anyway, she's been she got an email from her sister, and we're caught midway, and she's obviously, like Thea said, very nervous because it says um, everything is turning black. Mom and dad are coming. And that's a very ominous looking email, and I paused the screen where she was. Um, 
there's a chat and you can see the emails between the two sisters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I tried to look up the two YouTube links and Reddit. They found the two. There's like two YouTube links in the chats. Oh, so really? So I looked it up and yeah, one of them is a. Um, when I typed it in, it didn't work, but then Sami obviously put them on Reddit. Uh, right. One of them is a um, 3D VR experience of going to outer space. So you're like in the little space station in, in mm-hmm. space. Yeah. And then another one is like a nature thing of water. So somebody said, oh, maybe that's probably, you know, somebody who's very anxiety driven has has to watch that to chill out. But Trying to calm down. So they are legitimate YouTube uh, videos in the film. Um, <laughs> so anyway, back to that. That would have been a good so opportunity for like tentacle porn or something to throw it we, in there really we quick. We are... <laughs> We are shortly introduced to Christian. Explain a little bit about Christian, Thea. Um, Christian is basically gaslighting his girlfriend during this phone call and saying, okay. like, don't worry about it. You're panicking. You're overreacting. And he seems sort of like he's done. And then when we see his side of it, he's sitting with his friends in a bar or pizza place, wherever they are. Um, and they're all saying, essentially, like, if you're going to break up with her, you got to break up with her. That's it. Yeah, And there's huge yep. hints towards one of the characters who ends up becoming a, a mastermind in everybody's demise. Mm-hmm. Is that when Will Potter's character... Um, what is his name? Mark? Pele. No, not... not well, Pele, oh, the other yeah, one. But the other one says, oh, you can get all these milkmaids na- um, pregnant. And oh, he the He jumps asshole. in and goes, you can get this girl's <laughs> pregnant. Yeah, Pele also <laughs> says that, that she can get the girl's pregnant, which leads to later sure. on in the film... He does get a girl pregnant, or <laughs> she, supposedly it's set up to be pregnant. Well, and, she uh, felt it go I, in, I, she said. What did you guys think about the opening of this film? I thought it was one of the best openings I've ever seen. It's a very a good opening. Movie of its time. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I was wondering, like, because I had seen this, I've seen in, in the, the first one in the movie theater, the regular cut. There's no real difference in this and the director's cut other than seeds that are added. So there's nothing right. taken away in the director's Yeah, I was cut. trying the to remember. The opening is pretty much the it, you same, know, I was going on a month of memory, but... Yeah, the only thing different was that nighttime scene where Christian's being a super dick, and <laughs> there's about five or six scenes that are extended. And they almost threw so the baby, uh, the child, into the water, but didn't. Yes, uh, which is an explanation for another character's death. So Thea went in and automatically just saw the director's cut. You yeah. didn't see the regular cut. No. So you you haven't missed anything in the film. There's nothing I'm that's glad. alternate about it. Very good. So, um, and I, I thought the director's cut isn't actually an improvement of it. So, mm-hmm. anyway, we get to see what happened to Danny's family is that her sister has attached two long cables to two cars that are running in the f- uh, family's garage, put one under the door of her parents because we see them breathing in the beginning, sleeping. So, we don't really understand. Well, I don't know if they show on. them breathing necessarily, I just saw but it they're definitely they sleeping. Were they? they? No, they were breathing. Uh, yeah, they yeah. are. You, you see their chest rising. That could yeah, have been, uh, sister. you know, advanced uh, decay, like gases trying so to... So it's probably as they're dying. Could be, yeah. Uh, and then the other one is... And the thing is that that's automatically what I thought was going on when I saw it in the theater. Like, right. When I saw that they... Because I... Not not the part... Like, I knew that it had to do with carbon monoxide. I don't know why I knew that was the case, but I just figured that was the case of right. them not waking up. Which yeah. is a huge to me. That's a huge fear. Like, like that's, I'm yeah. very scared about that because yeah. there's a a pilot light in my gas stove that turns off by itself sometimes. Ah. So it's very. Do you have scary. a carbon I monoxide detector? I do not. So. God damn it, Alex! I know. Get one. Yeah, we might finish the show early. Get one. <laughs> so anyway, her parents are dead. Uh, her sister has attached the cable to her mouth and has decided to swallow the fucking carbon monoxide. She's p- very great. Why did she vomiting. have to use the um? hose to go to her why didn't she could have gone and just sucked it right out of the uh you know like up close maybe she didn't want them to have a, a violent death like she was gonna have it she might wake them up because she mm. puked or she puked on herself and everything she was gross yeah and it leads to an incredible visual of danny crying on christian's lap and mm-hmm. the camera slowly pushes out to a snowy um uh window and we just see the titles come in and i thought it was one of the strongest openings i've ever seen for a film mm-hmm. and this film is just chock full of little sort of um notes and previews of what's to come in the film like paintings on her wall of you know a bear with a little girl stuff like that you can mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know, the second time though i picked film. up so much more the even yeah. the opening of the film which has that sort of drawing uh, sort of, it is a drawing of basically what happens throughout the whole film. It spoils the movie <laughs> in the first. <laughs> thing, but watching it without a context, you don't know what the fuck it means because it's the same thing as Hereditary's trailer showed everything, but in co- out of context, you don't know what the fuck's going on. So it's not really right. spoiling. 
Um, so Thea, uh, Danny, get into um, Christian. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? He Depending is. Depending on which cut you've seen. If you're a complete Go, asshole, he is a good guy. <laughs> if yeah. if you aren't, <laughs> he is a bad guy. <laughs> uh, also, go. his eyes are huge. They are very large. He's British. That's He's Irish. Is that? Uh, oh yeah, I guess that is British. Yeah. Is he ever? Does that matter? He's. It's funny because there's a cartoon drawing that like of of him in the bear costume, and mm. his eyes are these gigantic sort of 1920s cartoon eyes, and I'm like, no, that, that's probably right. That's literally that look what like his it's eyes are. At all. To scale. Yeah. So it's interesting because I had seen the regular cut of the film. I'm jumping ahead of time. And I saw the regular cut of the film. And I was like, yeah, he's an asshole. He Mm -hmm. was stupid for not dumping Danny because he was too worried about... He's very selfish, obviously, in the regular cut of the film. He's very selfish in the regular cut of the film. In the director's cut, he's just a fucking... He's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I still don't think he deserved to die in the film. I do. But... Even in the director's cut? and the, no, no. The di- well, the director's cut makes it easier he, to not feel so awful. That scene about where it. she's you know like I mean? begging him, it's like so pathetic for her, and he's such an yeah, asshole. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. No, because and he, he turns lets it, her just do yeah, it. Yeah, because like, he's one of those guys that turns it around to make ugh, her feel guilty about it. Yeah, he's gaslighting her constantly. When I, that's not in the regular cut. So none of that um, is in the regular cut. He's just sort of a guy who doesn't pay attention to her. He's not actively right. being a piece of shit in the regular cut of the film. In the director's right. cut, you see all of it. So you're like, oh, I see why people mm-hmm. will want this guy to die. I don't in know the why Finland, they cut yes. it out. Why did they do it? Because the movie's three hours long. Yeah, yeah. but they could have like, cut around certain things, like throwing the child in the water or something and just only done the argument part, and that's it. But that scene with the child is directly... Which they do cut out in the regular cut, Danny. That's no, I know. Just, I don't know what you're talking I about. I know. I'm saying they could have. Oh, you mean you would keep. Okay. But, um, yeah, but that directly um, shows the death of that other, that young um, Brit- one, of the, one half of the British couple. Uh, right. How she died. They drowned her. Because, like, I remember seeing in the regular cut, and you, you know, that's the girl you hear her scream off camera. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then at the end, you see them just dragging her body, and I was like, what the fuck happened to her? Like, I guess it was supposed to be ominous that. She is dead anyway. You knew she was dead when you hear her scream in the, yeah. in the forest. But um, I thought that was in, an interesting scene. Wait, now so you're telling me they didn't drive her to the her. bus stop? Like they said? I thought <laughs> yeah, the they bus did. Stop was, the bus stop was underwater. So, um, <laughs> Thea, get into the other characters, the interactions between Danny and uh, Christian's friends, which is Pele, Josh, Mark, and that's it, right? Pele, Josh, and Mark. Yeah. Yeah. So Pele is their friend from Sweden, who is the one who li- grew up on this commune, essentially, that they're all going to. Um, and I always forget which one is Mark and Mark which one is Josh. Mark is the, Josh, the, the asshole. asshole, and Josh is the, Josh is the guy that um, is doing is the thesis tries guy. to steal his yeah, thesis. Um, so there's the asshole. Who's just an asshole, and there's basically not a lot, a whole lot more to say about it. I think Josh is the only American actor in the film. I think everybody else is portrayed by um, Europeans. Um, is Mark but, um, a European? It's, it's so and funny. Yeah. Yep. Go oh, but, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's English, British. Uh, um, like Will Powder. He was originally supposed to play right. Pennywise too, he until was. that all fell apart. Um, anyway, for better or worse, I guess. I mean, I, I like the guy. I didn't really give a shit. So. <laughs> Uh, and, and strangely enough, in the director's cut, uh, Mark's character is actually likable in an asshole way. And there are other cut, he's you just think sort so? of annoying. I thought so, yeah. I don't know, because I saw the regular cut, and I was, he's a dick, fuck him, you know, whatever. And then when I saw the director's cut, what did they cut, add? He, I, don't I, I actually found him. F- his, he has, like, his sarcasm is. There's more weight to it. I mean, sort of he's just... not like like. Look, I would probably even be friendly with a person like him because he is funny. But in the context of these people's values, like he's an yeah. asshole. <laughs> right, I understand. See, because in the f- in the regular cut of the film, he sort of he's not a very deep character to begin no. with. In the regular cut of the film, he is essentially one of the asshole characters in a Friday he's the 13th. He's cannon fodder. Yeah, he's like a Friday the 13th character. Just like, yeah. hey man, look at me, show my dick. <laughs> like I'm going to pee on in this the tree. Di- <laughs> Alright, don't be that way, Thea. That's yeah, just Thea. Strange. Come on. So then in, di- in the director's cut, since he <laughs> has a barrage of jokes in this version, he's much right. more funnier, so it makes him more, you know, watchable. Like the part when, when the old man, I guess, he's watching the old man across the, 
the the tables, <laughs> and he says, "What would that guy's face look like if I stuck a finger up his ass?" Oh yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that's like, that's a, like a joke I would say. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I thought he was funny. Yeah, but Alex, so you I... would be dead in a second if you were in this place. <laughs> they would kill you <laughs> first. Oh. They would kill you first. Oh, uh, I know. Ah, well, it's all right. If only I like I to think they would it. kill us all. <laughs> uh, they, might, they, they might they might spare you the flower crown on her head mm. you might be the may queen but anyway i just want that outfit at the end that's not so <laughs> so apparently what did they that that outfit weighed like 20 or 40, 50 pounds or something and they had to imagine. like didn't part anyway but josh is um the only probably other likable character besides danny but he does mm-hmm. make stupid mistakes yes so it's funny because the film almost plays the audience to be like, see, they do something bad. They each do something bad. <laughs> yeah. So they deserve to die. They they yeah. they cross. But a line would they, they have not died if they out. hadn't though? Yeah, Josh's yeah. big obviously mistake is taking photographs. He was a dead man anyway. But I mean, was he, he though? Like a hundred percent? Ah, I think he probably was because I feel like he was probably also doing other shit. But, but like, let's just hypothetically say he was totally well behaved and respectful and did nothing wrong. Would he? No, he would have died anyway. Okay. Because I mean, when the I was British watching... couple didn't really do anything wrong. I guess they right. like freaked out. Oh, that's in the true. Deaths they didn't do anything when right, they threw right. themselves like, from the cliff. Like the British guys, like you're fucked. You're all yeah. crazy. And like, like they, like, they wanted to leave. That's why they probably. They didn't him. like his accent. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they talk funny, oh, but okay. uh, so yeah, I, I don't want to like spend three hours on this uh, episode. No, even I, know. I could. It's not the director. <laughs> we, uh, we don't want to do that. No, we, we definitely what? could. So, what you, um, what's your favorite thing? What is your favorite scene or one of your favorite scenes from the from the movie? Who are you asking me or out? I mean, there's a what, lot like, of things. What shook you? Okay, you obviously you the opening got to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the the suicide scene with the two older people jumping off to the cliffs of the death yeah. is very, and not to say anything about it, impactful uh. um, scene. And <laughs> just the way it looks was grotesque. It's so funny because they say that Ari Aster doesn't do jump scares, but he does. He absolutely does. What was the jump scare? It's just scare? that he doesn't. No, it's I just mean, the fact that he jumping, doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't do the. He doesn't do the. Da-da! He doesn't do that, and you know when it's horror less films obvious. do that. Yeah. Yes, he. It's like because I mean, if you j- cut from one scene to another, he match cuts a lot in his films. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, like the thing, the big thing in Hereditary, and if you haven't seen Hereditary, you might skip a minute ahead. Hereditary, like, oh, there's no jump scares. There's no jump scares. There's a there's a shot where it cuts right to a child's head on the road. <laughs> yeah. When there was a normal scene before it, of course that's gonna make you go, oh fuck. Yeah, you know well, I mean? but it's not like a jump scare where you jump out of your seat. That's what a jump scare is. Mm-hmm. Like you're not like startled I'm sure people out of your have seat. Jumped. I'm sure people mm-hmm. have been startled by looking at a person's head. Definitely that startled. Was not on the fucking screen a second before it. But it's also, I yeah, but the, the scene screen. before it was a fucking. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> finding out that somebody was decapitated. Like you already. Okay, knew. when I yeah. saw when I saw this th- in the theater and. It was complete, you know, a woman singing, and you just see the really quiet landscape of Sweden in the snow. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. it cuts to a very loud Ring. sound effect of a phone. Yeah, that ringing. scared me. At the beginning, that's yeah. it's, it's a bit of a that was, that was the only part. I mean, that it's spooky. Scared me. But it's usually so, the sound cues that make you actually jump. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's it's like yeah. you're you're in a. And lull. he doesn't use as many. I mean, of those seeing a child's no, he head decapitated for would. me is just a nice thing. I would never get that's scared good. of that. Oh god. So this is a Swedish <laughs> horror film. It is a version, obviously, of the films like um, The Wicker Man and, and mm-hmm. very much like cult films like Kill List and stuff like that. Sorry if that's a spoiler for that movie. Um, the interesting origin of this film is that Ari Aster had gone through a breakup himself and wrote this film when Sweden actually approached him about making a film, a mm-hmm. horror film, to promote Sweden. And they were like, okay, good. So they made it. And mm-hmm. this it's interesting Sweden? that a country with... I know, yeah. I don't know what it is. I mean, it looks beautiful, I guess, but, I guess, but I don't want to go there now. Yeah, and the fact that they shot it in Budapest, apparently, with the <laughs> yeah. that is, is very strange, yeah. but whatever. So he got hired to make this film, and he wrote it, and you know, he used the basis of his relationship for it. Um, there are a lot of technically interesting things done with the film. One of the most beautiful things I saw is that transition shot of when she's running in the room to go to the bathroom and it cuts the bathroom, and she's inside yeah, in the, the, in the airport. Yeah, she's in, in the, the bathroom airplane? in the airplane. It's one of the mm-hmm. best transitions That's a really I've good ever transition. seen. I just love that scene. Uh, yeah. what, what, is your, what are uh, the things that stood out for you, Danny? Uh, I love the whole fucking how they all like empathize with each other aspect. Like when 
Okay. When they're ha- when he's having sex, they're all fucking orgasming. When she's crying, they all start crying and shit. Like it's amazing. Obviously, mm-hmm. a big thing about the film is that um, Danny has overnight lost her whole family, and since she's already anxiety riddled, this film uh, concludes with her gaining a new family. Now, whether or not the May Queens are kept alive, I think she is. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's the issue. No, that that girl um, was like, "You're our family now." Like she was saying, "Okay." So, you know, I guess she sort of gets her happy ending. It is in the script. It's written that she's lost her mind by the end of it. So mm. she's she's crazy now, I guess, in the film sense. I mean, they're all pretty crazy. And there's a lot of aspects of, you know, <laughs> I, I've been thinking about this Danny for two months because I'm going to bring it up right now. And what? I'm very much emba- embarrassed Danny. Right no, now what? This is, I'm going to bring it up right now anyway. But there's this aspect of blood and dropping blood into um, food. Which I've heard from many NPH. cultures. Oh, I see actually. where you're going with this. Um, so, <laughs> so there was there was a scene where this young girl and and I and there's there's a couple reasons why we have Thea on this show. One is because she's very smart, mm. she's funny, mm. she's and very intelligent, yeah. and then also we can we can tell her things that'll shock the shit out of her because oh god, I, it was only somebody else in this world that I knew that I had to tell this because I haven't told anybody else this in a while. Well, let's tell everyone. I went, I will. Let's do it. So I visit okay, Danny, right. and Danny so, told me something that was so vile and so <laughs> offensive to me in the middle of the street that he enjoyed doing. <laughs> and I was like, I told him like two months ago because I visited him. I said, Is it I'm Red gonna, Wings? No, no. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't do the podcast anymore if it was that. Okay. <laughs> but I told, I told Danny, I was like, listen, I'm going to tell Thea this because this is disturbing. <laughs> I was, and he was looking at me laughing. He goes, why is that so you know, messed up? And I was like, you're weird. Leave me oh, alone. Oh, God. <laughs> Danny, what? I'm and so it's not even. It's not a horrible, I, I, I remember. It's not a, listen, it's not a horrible, horrible thing. I just. No, 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 you tell it because I'm blanking because there's I so many no, things I'm, 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 no, no, I'm not exactly sure where you're going okay, with Danny, it. Okay, Danny. I thought I was. What, what is it? What is the thing that you like to do when you have cuts on your fingers? Oh, it tastes my own blood? Not that, you weird fuck, with another girl. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, oh, God. Listen to this. I just. I kind of like the idea of, like, if you, you know, you finger somebody, you have, like, maybe cut cuticles, and it kind of stings your finger a little bit, because, the, like, the, you know, the salt. Like, you feel it on your Yeah, finger? you feel, like, kind of hurting the cut a little. I mean, as long as you're not putting open here. wounds into hey, somebody. Hey, listen, she, she understands. I am out of here. This is... It, that doesn't make any <laughs> sense! <laughs> I, I don't get that, like... It was just me Look. hearing. Yeah, I have. Listen, I understand. Okay, I'm gonna. This is gonna sound very. Uh, I, I don't mean to it sound feels, hetero no, or whatever. It feels uh-huh. nice. You I feel understand. Tingling. Listen, I understand. I understand. A, a, a love of two women is more intimate than I think any man with woman sort of love sure. is. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's more. Well, that's where the cuticles come in. I think there's a real sort of <laughs> meld between two women, as opposed to like two guys. So I, I guess maybe with Thea would let this pass. When Danny told me this, this I was like, what are you <laughs> it talking about? It horrified you. Because it was such a strange <laughs> thing to hear from Danny. Just like, yeah, I like when I have cuts on my fingers, then you can feel the stinging on your fingers when you're fingering somebody. I was like, what does that mean? Like, what's wrong with you? Well, I think... Like, I don't I, well, find it I mean, offensive. I just thought it was like, I, what the fuck? Well, I mean, I... I <laughs> Obviously, in, that's a in very In trying big, to avoid uh, yes, getting I understand. too blue, I, understand. I understand that... To some degree, because I I do that more often. There I understand. You go. Right, 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 right. <laughs> See, I get. Who's that. the weird but, one now? No, no. Two to one. And also, I bite my nails. So that's me that's too. Exactly. Sometimes. That's the point. Yeah. But <laughs> the, 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 en- the enjoying of the stinging of the fingers, like. <laughs> I'm moving out of here, well, Danny. I'm you don't got to. I'm getting out of this people, world. You know, <laughs> right, people enjoy pain it. with their pleasure sometimes. I, I'm I'm glad. I like I like how it backfired. I know. You didn't think this through to the end point, did you? Well, I guess one thing that I do like is I, I got it from me. I might as well say my thing is I, I saw uh-huh. what was that movie? Um, <laughs> what was that movie with uh, Nicholas Wending Reffins? The the what was that movie? The Devil movie? What the hell was it I called? I don't know. Antichrist? No, no, the uh, Nicholas no. Wending Reffin oh, about God, the models. Oh, the then horrible the, uh, 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 the neon demon. Yeah. yeah, neon demon. There's a scene. You like when cheetahs with, get into your hotel room? <laughs> There's a scene with Jenna Malone. It's an absolutely bizarre, useless scene where Jenna Malone climbs atop a dead girl's body. 
Sure. And she begins to spit on the girl's face and then lick the girl's <laughs> face. <laughs> and, and it <laughs> awakens oh, no. something very bizarre. <laughs> Not the dead body part. It's still Jenna Malone sure. spitting in my face part. Yeah. But that okay. was good stuff. Yeah, if you like, have to get your face like, wow, spit on by somebody, Jenna Malone is you the one. You were like, one. oh, no, I have a new thing. <laughs> so maybe that's what Danny yeah, and Jenna I Malone can so shake <laughs> hands on. <laughs> You know what I what, what I'm gonna do both though? Bring your weird shit to the table. I'm gonna have it in my will that when I die, Jenna Malone has to come <laughs> to my funeral. <laughs> so anyway, back to the film. Uh, were there any things about the film that did not work for you? Uh, you know, I think it might be a little too long. The the director's mm-hmm. cut or just a regular cut? Both of them. I mean, really? Yeah. I look. It's like an almost perfect film in my mind, but I. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I keep struggling if I like it's it better than Hereditary. So I'm not sure. I feel like yeah, it's like weird. more have... like a beautiful female, feminine feeling movie, and mm-hmm. Hereditary is more like a brutal, like masculine feeling movie to me, or something. I don't think so because Hereditary is about a mother dealing with. Her yeah, I know, but I like I, I can't explain. It's not logical. It's just that's the vibe I get. Like, yeah. And the weird thing is, I haven't seen Hereditary a second time yet because that, it's better that, the that second time. Cu- no, I know, but that movie cuts a little bit too close to home for me at the moment. Yeah. Right. So I sort of like, I don't want to know if I want to go through it. And I'm not like a pussy where like, I can't watch a certain movie because a certain way. But that one was very effective. Well, if you were a pussy, going. I would cut my finger purposefully. <laughs> and then put it right in. Yeah. Very good. Um, but yeah, the thing with Hereditary, I like both both screenings of the film, I felt went like nothing. Like they went very quickly for me, which is very strange because I was so engaged watching the film. Like with you know, with my other friend when I saw the film, like it was like it just went quick. Then when I saw the director's cut, you do sort of feel this long, like it feels a little, but it doesn't. To me, it didn't feel long at all because I was just so entertained by the movie, even though I knew what the fuck was gonna happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the scenes that I hadn't seen when they come up, they added a lot more to the movie. Scenes I where mean, it's Josh a great movie. It is like it's just I don't know how they could have fixed it, but it, there is a couple the parts that's a little draggy. Like, the scenes where Josh and Christian is extended in the film, when they're arguing about him, you know, basically ripping off Josh to use his... Um, thesis, yeah. Thesis? Yeah. I was like, wow, because it added a lot more to Josh's character. I I, mm-hmm. I thought Josh's character was like, all right, but in this version, he was like, in the director's cut, I thought he was he was more fleshed out because he had, yeah. you know... He was... There's only two real fights in the films, obviously Josh and Christian and, and um, uh, Danny and Christian... And that scene, that was the scene where Danny and, and Christian are in the nighttime after they just witnessed that weird sort of ritual storytelling thing. Yeah. Uh, that's the scene that um, Ari Aster said he couldn't believe that he cut that out of the film. Like He could not understand why he cut that out of the film for timing because he yeah. thought that was probably the most critical scene in the film, which is true because... Well, I that asked is my such friends that I watched it with and they were like, I don't know, maybe it's better that he's not outright evil or like, you know, so hateable. Nah. But I think it's better I that he is. prefer it. But yeah. I also thought that her basically pointing out why everything was wrong was the most believable thing in the whole film. Like, that yeah. was... Oh, yeah, That yeah, was yeah. like, hey, when she's kind of like, why did Pele ask us here? Why did this? Why did that? And it, absolutely, yeah. I was like, yes, you've never seen this. I mean, you, uh, maybe once or twice you've seen this in a couple of You see it in movies, Cabin in the Woods, actually. So, yeah, right. So, but like, uh, that's like hyper-stylized and stuff, and it makes sense because the guy the guy with the bong, right? He's the one that puts yeah. everything out. Mm-hmm. And in this one, you see it again. I'm like... Like, I would believe more horror films. Like, it might get, like, tedious to see that in every horror film, but at least it's believable. Because I, I yeah. know I would fucking certainly say some shit if I saw some weird stuff. I have, I'm paranoid about everything. I would have been out so of there you... within the first five minutes. Like <laughs> Absolutely. Because I know what, yeah. it, what was it, like, eight-hour drive for them to get over there? Yeah. Fuck it. I'll, I'll find the way to get the fuck out of there because there's no way you can deal with it. I think that. it was four hours. Four what, hours. It's too much. Was it four hours? Yeah. Oh, that's not so bad. So what did you guys think of Florence <laughs> Pugh's... Um, um, she she is character. really, really good uh, at yeah, having can... anxiety attacks to the point that it makes me want to have one. But then seeing her have one, strangely, <laughs> makes you feel better about your Calmed own. Calmed you down, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, she's 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 getting in there. She was in, like, an, I think she was in a WWE movie before this, so she was playing a wrestler. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> a real... Based on a real-life British wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> It starred The Rock and stuff, but I don't think anybody saw that movie. And it was a funny thing about that movie is like it's based on a, a real wrestler who ended up. 
<laughs> she ended up having like a sex scandal because she was fucking her boyfriend who was a wrestler and then he would bring in his other wrestler friend and they would fuck her and videotape it uh-huh. and then they <laughs> this is the funny would part would they tag what team like here? wrestling style no oh, we God. besides that no but then they would take <laughs> the wrestling belt you know the championship yeah. belt and then they jizzed on it <laughs> <laughs> I find that hilarious but you know that's just me Oh boy. He is like, oh, see, so no, now you've gotten too far. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> also, you can see uh, Florence Pugh in Lady Macbeth. And I say, oh. wink, wink, Google Lady Macbeth with Florence oh, Pugh. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. You know, you know Thea's going to be the first one. Yeah, she is. Uh, oh, no, no, God. she's not. Sorry, Heather, she won't be doing that. So, um, <laughs> let's, let's just. Let's just do a, a rapid shot of other things that we thought worked for the film. Um, stuff where, you know, when they're doing the driving scene is extended. That could have got shortened, obviously. Um, yeah. That scene, you know, where the camera is flowing and then turns upside down. I love that. All that shit. The art direction? Art direction, Thea. What about the art direction? It's pretty beautiful. Yeah. They, It's pretty impeccable. I think sometimes they get a little carried away and obsessed with their own art direction in a way. Like, there also. were things... The murals on the wall where they're staying and also the love story mural that they show almost right off the top when they arrive. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, I feel like they're a little too leading in ways. Okay. Like, it's kind of like... My friend did predict what told, was going to happen. It told me what was going to happen. Yeah, like, it told me exactly what was going to happen. He's saying every single thing, and I'm like, no, nah, you're wrong. Like, this makes me wonder, do, do Swedish people re- read right to left? Because that's the way that mural was done. I got yeah, well, that's what I know, and not that I'm <laughs> looking at it, but if I was looking at this Google image you told me, I would have to say, wow, everybody should look up Lady Macbeth, pew, <laughs> naked. Oh, boy. Well, I didn't say naked. This is offensive. Um, yeah, my only t- um, minuscule sort of problem with the art direction is that is obviously one person did all the art for this. Mm-hmm. Like, all the art looks like one person drew it. Yeah. So, uh, that's the only thing where I was like, maybe they'd be different artists. But, I mean, the art looks cool. Well, like, not that weird room where she style. propositions him to have sex with the child. Yeah, that's obviously mm-hmm. different. Like, people were actually looking for that on Reddit. They were like, where do you sell this wallpaper at? Like, people were trying to get it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, and obviously, um, like... Although, it's you could you could realistically think, like, if they all grew up in the same... Place they could all have the same inherited art style. In yeah, it, it, it sort of looks like this weird medieval. They're like a hive mind, yeah. art, but like Scandinavian flavor to it. Would you want to be? Wait, be nice here's to see a, a little question: little Would you guys want to be in that commune? Not to be murdered, but to live there. I don't know. Probably I mean, not. I don't really want to have a baby when I'm like 15. So yeah, and you gotta like no? you gotta live and sleep in a room with like 40 people. Who the fuck? I mean, that? that's my other thing is like yeah, but then you get I to know you get we to bring make... people back and kill mm. them. That's fun. I mean, yeah, that was a, I was a little confused by that because I remember seeing people in regular clothes when they had and I was like, how many people like regular people like this would be a, an issue if more than like yeah. But then, obviously, I guess those no, were just... They're only in ceremonial um, garb because yeah, they do this in the I think winter they, and the summer, and that's it. Right. I think right. they only brought back five five or six people. They didn't li- literally bring, like, a bunch yeah. of people because then they would obviously be an issue. There would still be a fucking issue if, like, family member disappeared at the midst. Yeah. yeah, but that's why they yeah. drive this, four hours away. All they know is they're the going to But the thing is, Sweden. this is... Like they say, they always have Midsommar, but this particular one where they kill all these people is the first one they've done in, like, what, 98 years? Or 90 years. years. Something like that. 90 years. So this is the only time they do it. So this won't happen again with these murders. And it's only the third one in. So apparently there's right. a lot more shit that happens. But they do so kill 72-year-olds every time they turn 72. Yeah, right. Yes. Um, but I guess that's, you know, they, they have... Uh, it's voluntary. Yeah, but they also have a... Assist- not a system. I would do that so shit. They have... Um, they have legal suicide in Europe, European countries, which is, I think is an incredible right. thing, um, which they should do uh, without being arrested. I could think of plenty of people I would love to assist with their suicides. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh boy. Um, uh, any confusing parts of the film that you did not understand? Uh, no. I, I think it was very, very no. well made. Yeah, the first Although, Oh, wait. No, I do have one. Here's why I was confused. First of all... Didn't need to have stat rape in this movie, but fine, we did it anyway. We did what? Stat, stat rape? rape? With a 15. Oh, yeah. We didn't have to make her but, 15, but we made listen, her 15. I'm, well, that's what makes it disturbing. 
I'm not like condoning that, but I think that's just like it's like another country. So maybe they f- look uh, at youth in a different way. Still yeah, still don't yeah, like I know. it. I don't care. I know. I get what you're saying. Um, I get what you're saying. But so, but so they then we frame cannot, that. We cannot get away with an episode where there's no rape it's with fine. you. Didn't bring it up. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if we reviewed 2001: A Space Odyssey, she'll find Ugh. rape in that movie too. But go ahead. Probably. Um, but so they've set that up as the, like the cult has set that up for her to get pregnant, right? Right. right. So they've done it on purpose, and they're happy Obviously, that yes. he's doing it, sort of. Yeah. But then, but then when they're sewing him into the bear costume, when he gets chosen to die, uh-huh. they're like, "Fuck you! You're a piece of shit." Essentially, like is what they're saying. The to him while they're the doing even said that, that's girlfriend. an extended. That's an extended scene too, where the right. Uh, I guess the the whatever the lady, the older lady, the one that's in charge, she tells him, you know, you know, you would not be husband material at all, but you know, we want yeah. you to have. Which is totally extended, and it explains why he kind of goes along with it because they're like, "Oh, you can get much more material for your thesis," which was not right. in the original version of the film. Uh, so it, okay, it explains a lot. Like, I'll, yeah, that's oh, true. That's I like forgot that along. extended explanation. Okay, yeah, but so, it's which interesting, interesting. It's interesting though that they're like, "You're a piece of shit," but I'm like, "But you." wanted him to do this it's it was confusing to me as a line i was just it's like, obviously it, yeah it's a very communal thing where they look at outsiders as sort of their you know seed for them to or whatever use. yeah right because yeah. they, they basically do this to they to gave him the opportunity to prove he's a piece of shit and he took it <laughs> and he definitely so, right. took it and the only thing other thing i was confused about is when they do kill josh you know because obviously they have they skinned um Mark's face and he wears and the guy's not wearing his pants he's just like with his dick hanging out <laughs> which made see two dicks in the film like it's good for them yeah um and like <laughs> I didn't know that that agonal breathing was Josh on the floor going, mm-hmm. uh, like that because it didn't see it didn't match his mouth for some reason but uh, apparently, that, apparently that was him I thought it was a guy like because you know they have that so that was him without deformed, a face that deformed kid you know, yeah that deformed yeah kid, uh, I thought that was him doing that like the, in the prophet background. Like, I thought he was wearing the mask but obviously it wasn't him Apparently the guy right. with the mask on was the guy who was pissed at him for urinating on the tree. So okay. and then he ended up committing suicide for some reason at the end too. I guess he chose to do it. Um, oh, you're right. Yep. The the art inside that house is different than the one that's in the big commune. Who are the um, one thing that confused me? Who are, okay? So of the people that were burned in the house, and then we should we should probably rate this. Um, <laughs> we had the four sacrifices, which is like mm-hmm. Connie, Simon, Mark. Uh, Josh, then Chris. You were into Connie, right? Con- yeah. Then Christian in the bear suit, and then we had uh, the main guy's Swedish guy's brother, the old guy. Six. It was six um, sacrifices, I believe they needed. The old guy that was uh, pissed at Mark for pissing on the tree, and then there were two others, or one other. Uh-huh. Uh, who were they? The two old people that jumped off the cliff. But they wouldn't their heads have been smashed and shit? Like, how did they? Yeah, I don't. Maybe they did it off screen. I don't know. Okay. What are you asking? I'm asking who are the about? extra people that burned? <laughs> the two old people. Oh, oh, um. One know. of them was. Wait. Or maybe they were just like stand ins for those two old people. The two British people, three Americans. Yeah. The two old people that jumped off. That's like. <laughs> I literally just Christian in a bear suit. Okay, am I just stupid? Okay, whatever. Oh wait, but it was but uh, Pele's brother. Is yeah, and so is the guy yeah, that was okay, pissed right. about the, the tree. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a round. It's know. a it's an even number, like around six. <laughs> what, what okay, in any case, what do you want to rate it? What do you rate it? Wait, wait, Go. Hold on, Danny. Hold on. Let me see if there's <laughs> one more thing we can talk about this film because I love this movie. Mm. Okay. Uh, no, no, I guess not really, but um. Yeah, the love, the sex scene. What did you guys think about that? That obviously disturbed Thea, so we don't have to ask her. It's um, fine. I like when the old lady's pushing his butt. <laughs> That's funny. Um, it <laughs> is. This is the part that I was like, I was fine with Ari going into doing a different type of film the next round because mm-hmm. the ending of this is very much heavily influenced by the ending of Home uh, um, Hereditary. Yeah. Because it's dead bodies that are made into effigies, and they're mm-hmm. like very disturbing looking. And then you know, that's the only thing where I was like, all right, he sort of repeated himself. But I had no issue. I don't have real issue besides the fact that he sort of repeated himself. Yeah. 
This is like a yeah. bigger budget I mean, version of the. I mean, it's cults Hereditary. in both. Repeated right. himself by having yeah. so it's a lot of repeated imagery. For five minutes. That's why. Yeah, I was discussing with my friend. Is like there's only one way to, end, or two ways to end the cult film. The cult wins, yeah. or you escape the cult. And the yeah. cult wins. They always end it like this. The main character is fucking yeah. dead, and, and they're surrounded by dead bodies and shit like that. And and but the way that Aster sort of uh, Aster lenses it is really fucked up because the bodies look very fucked up. Like they mm-hmm. look like real like real dead bodies. Like the fact that I like um it. what's his name um the, the asshole friend Mark is it Mark Yeah Yeah right. Like he's yep. in that jester costume, and it's just his head, and you can tell that the rest yeah. of the body, the rest of the body is made out of hay or something. It's like yeah. really fuck, like it's really weird because they just dump the bodies on it, and you're like, oh, like it's just. Didn't really, they? Um, it's really effective. in the extended edition. Didn't they cut off Christian's legs to fit him in the bear suit? They did. I didn't. They did not that the do that in the theatrical. That. There's a leg in the garden. They well, don't it's a black all, leg right? in the I mean, garden. I think sh- it's Josh's. It's yeah, Josh's for sure. Uh, yeah. Thanks for co- picturing that out, Danny. I knew you thought of ethnicity <laughs> in a different way. Who are you? Uh, the Prime Minister of Canada? That's true. Anyway. No, no, that so, would be a white <laughs> leg in makeup. Not for long. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I didn't notice that the first time because I was like, they, they didn't really show the guy was reaching for the saws. Like, if anybody saw the film, um, what was that Japanese film saw that we saw? Uh, Audition? Yeah. You know, yeah. she saws that guy's leg yeah. off with the fucking wire. Mm-hmm. And that's what they bring out in this. And I was like, I don't remember this. But then they, they don't show it graphically, rip off the guy's foot. Then you realize no. they chopped his hand and his legs off. But he's so drugged up, I guess he's completely numb and he just burns to death and stuff like that. But um, I, I, I guess that's uh, really what much I I can say about this film. Did you guys catch the faces that were morphing into the trees and stuff like that? Because apparently... Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. You can see the... The part when they lift Danny up on that, you know, little surfboard, and they're walking her mm-hmm. down, you can see the sister's face digitally put into the trees. And I was like, man, I don't know. And then uh, I looked at it, and then I realized it was because one eye is lighter than the other. Like, if you right. pause it when they're lifting her up in the wide shot, you can see her face. And I yeah, I'd have to rewatch it for that kind of stuff. And the, yeah, and then when I first saw the film, but that's people who, like, fucking got real problems. I stopped shit like that. But, <laughs> and then, like, the first time when I, whenever I would see the trailer, I thought, you know, when she goes into that, when she has that freak out on the drugs, and she goes into that little yeah. house. And yeah. that person's face appears. I thought that was like a regular. She just saw like the the older lady's face in the mirror, but apparently yeah. it's, her, it's her sister's face too because you can see the. I want to rewatch it a third time. Right, now. I think I remember that. But yeah. um, yeah, I thought all in all, this is like a very strong film. Um, I I I I'm like very torn on whether it's. I think it's better than Hereditary, although a lot of people say it is, and a lot of people I, say it I, isn't. I feel like it is right now, but also start. I don't. It's right. Because the thing it's is with Hereditary, yeah. Because the thing is, like, my only reasons I would say it's just a little bit, just underneath Hereditary is because it's borrowing stuff from Hereditary with the cult stuff. Yeah, and right. I've already seen Hereditary, but the thing is, the guy does it so fucking well. But if you had seen this first, right? What what would I yeah. say? I would. Yeah, but there's nothing paranormal here. 10. Hereditary is mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and they and they did that specifically because I remember there was a scene in the trailer where you see his legs lift up. You see somebody's right. legs lifting up, and I was like, and that that wasn't even in the fucking director's cut either. That's just in the trailer, right. and apparently what it is is that was just um, Christian when he's on the drugs, he's picturing himself floating up to have sex with the girl. <laughs> now whether that might be lost to the audience, and they might think he actually floats to the girl, mm. is different. Right. So that's why they cut that out, so the film is not like paranormal at all. It's just right. people, which makes it just you know scarier because these people believe in a bigger force. Anyway, What's uh, the I spoke too much in this fucking episode. I obviously <laughs> will give it a a ten out of ten of getting that young, young, sweet gush. Oh, I mean, um, <laughs> um, ten out of ten. I'll punch you. Going to write a gigantic paper, ripping off your friend, and then uh, I guess it all leads back to fucking kids, man. I guess it's fucked up. <laughs> Whatever, you go next. Th- Danny. Uh, I'm going to give it I think a 10 maybe a 9.5 Ooh. no a 10 I'm giving it a 10 I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 <laughs> um, fucking Cut fucking a, a, oh. you know a child and then um, an <laughs> adult starts singing into <laughs> your face and you just stare at her in, like in disbelief as she sings and you keep fucking Let's guess what Thea's rating is going to be. About. It's not going to be about fucking Thea. children. I have a, a, a feeling. Nope. <laughs> well, first of all, it's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> is it a nine? Okay. One point um, for fucking children. I'm going to go LSD dance offs, <laughs> meat pie pubes, and mm. old ladies who push your butt during sex. Oh, that's time. good. I would not. I would not mind an old lady pushing. I wouldn't butt either. <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. 
Only oh. if she, only if right after she smiles. Yeah. At you. So yeah. So <laughs> so since Danny's the only true drug addict here, I'm not a drug so you addict. say that the trips, <laughs> of, you know, with the trees melting and shit, that's a, that's how it really looks. And I stuff? mean, it, mm-hmm. it kind of gets the. Oh, gist. Thea, you can chime in. Oh no, I'm just asking. Oh, okay. it, it gets the idea, know. like the movement and She's everything. She's a professional. She can't say it. <laughs> I've never experienced like seeing grass growing out of my foot or something like that, but I've definitely seen like right. things kind of breathing and moving a little. I mean, they never say what drug it is, though. Well, they do either, shrooms right? the first kind of... time, and then the second time, it's some right. some spring water with properties, whatever the fuck that means. So mm-hmm. We don't know what that is. <laughs> Could be anything. Uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think, to me, so far, it's the movie, my favorite film of the year. I mean, I've seen a couple of really good films this year, like Parasite, and um, mm-hmm. I forgot what else, fucking else I saw. But um, I, for me, it's my favorite of the year, and the fact that I saw it twice, and, uh, you know. Yeah, I've seen it twice. Speaks for itself. Oh. Speaks for itself. Um, so with that, um, Thea, what's the final word? Wow. Danny, what's the final word? Dad's November part two. <laughs> the horror deconstruction.